Today I'm going to do an unboxing of this Pioneer Compact Subwoofer. The subwoofer is destined to go in my Saab. So this video is part one of three. This will be the un unboxing and an explanation of the features and what's inside the box. Part two will be fitting to the car and wiring it into the uh, existing stereo system. And part three will be uh, a review of the sound and general usability. So stay tuned and let's see what this is all about. Welcome back. If this is your first time at my channel, consider subscribing. There's a subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. And if you decide you're getting value from this video as you're watching it, don't forget to give it a like down by the title. So this is a Pioneer TSWX130DA. It's a compact subwoofer designed to fit under the seat. If we look on the side of the box, there's a list of features. Class D active subwoofer, built in amp, digital bass control, trademark, uh, whatever that means. It's a sealed system. It's got an eight by five and a quarter woofer, built in class D amplifier. It's got a wired remote control that does gain frequency, phase and bass mode. Crossover frequency is selectable from 50 to 125 hertz at minus 12 dB per octave. Speaker and RCA level inputs. Sensitivity in deep mode, 95 dB in dynamic 100 dB, frequency response in deep mode 20 to 200 hertz and in dynamic 40 to 160 hertz. There's a little extra information on the back, there's a list of parts, we'll come to that when we uh, un unpack. There's a uh, picture of frequency response curve, a picture of the overall dimensions of the unit uh, which is uh, 11 inches by just under eight by just under three. I received this unit uh, through the post. Uh, it was ordered mail order, uh, which of course is common at the moment with uh, lockdowns and uh, the COVID-19 problems we're having. Looking at the exterior of the box, a bit of damage in this corner here, some creases around. It's taken a bit of a battering, oh, bashed in the corner there. If I press on the box, I can tell that the unit must have stout packaging inside, but only at each end of the unit. The middle of the box easily uh, squashes in, which uh, I'm not best pleased about because it came wrapped purely in a bin liner. So let's hope that the uh, unit inside has been uh, adequately protected. To be honest, I think if this had been packed in another box would have been much preferable. That would, give, given that I paid £9 for PMP, I don't think that that would have been too much to expect. That's not really a, a reflection on the unit, more a reflection on the supplier. Let's open the box. Interesting that there are no security seals. We can see straight away that we've got some polystyrene uh, reinforcement at the ends of the box. That's a little bit disappointing. Come on Pioneer. You can do better than that. It's quite easy these days to do moulded cardboard reinforcements, which can of course be uh, recycled, unlike uh, this expanded polystyrene. Which... So that's a demerit for Pioneer straight away. The remote control in a plastic bag. Again, another demerit for Pioneer. Why couldn't that have been in a paper bag? Come on Pioneer, let's do our bit for the uh, turtles. At the other end, we have the main connection leads. Again in a plastic bag. Again, what's wrong with a paper bag? The label on this says it's for speaker input and line input. This looks like the main power lead. Plenty of length on it by the looks of it. Three colours. The black stands to reason that that must be the uh, negative. The yellow has got a fuse unit on it, so that must be the positive. The label on it says it must be connected to at least a 10 amp. Does it come with a fuse? Yes, it does. It comes with a fuse. A, a standard conventional automotive 10 amp fuse, so that's good. I'm going to take a punt and guess that the blue lead is a remote on off uh, signal wire and a little package of bits and pieces and brackets. Various screws. Oh, and what looks like possibly a cable clamp. At this end also, we've got the warranty card and the instructions. It has received something of a bashing in the post. Polystyrene reinforcement at the end has uh, 
has taken some damage. This is an energy absorbing material and hopefully the energy of the impact was dissipated by breaking this and not by damaging the unit. The polystyrene at the other end hasn't taken any damage. Now we get to the business part of the deal. Again, a foam bag. Come on, Pioneer, what's wrong with a paper bag? And here's the unit. Well, <laughs> it's certainly quite hefty. And yes, indeedy, very compact. Metal grill on the front, which will protect the uh, base cone. Looks like the uh, speaker cone itself is flat. And that also looks like maybe it's made in uh, a metal. Actually, I know that it's aluminium. Uh, I got that information off the uh, Pioneer website. A couple of positions for fixing brackets so that you can uh, presumably tie it down into the car or fix it to uh, the seat frame. Yes, a very nice touch. All the connections are recessed into the unit. That is a cable bracket that I saw in there. It clearly goes there. All the connections go in this recess and the cables can come out here which will enable this to sit flat on the car carpet under the seat. I guess that's what you'd pretty much expect when you buy a more expensive and uh, good quality unit. Uh, the, these kind of design features which, are, which do increase the cost of the unit from a production point of view. Uh, a lot, I, I have spotted that a lot of cheaper under seat subs have their connections often on the side they're potentially liable to getting knocked. Despite being plastic, I can feel no flex in that. It is a two-piece case, and it certainly feels very sturdy. Even the uh, grill. Uh, luckily, despite the damage to the packaging, the unit itself appears to have taken uh, no damage whatsoever. I can see nothing. The unit is uh, black and grey, so it should blend in to the dark cavity under a seat quite nicely without making itself uh, visually obvious. I am planning to mount this under the seat eventually as a permanent uh, mounting, but in the second part of this three-part series I will try wiring it up to the boot amp rather than the head unit and see how it performs from the boot. I always thought Pioneer were a Japanese firm. This unit is made in China. Well, isn't everything these days? China is the world's workshop basically. So looking at the connections inside this uh, recess, an RCA type socket for the controller uh, or remote I'm guessing that is, uh, a white connector here that's marked backup ground rem. So I'm assuming that that means uh, the power ground and as I suspected that blue wire is remote. We've got uh, an input selector for speaker and RCA level. We've also got a switch to switch the input gain between normal and high. We'll have to uh, consult the instructions for how that should be used. And here we have the main inputs, which takes this connector here. Oh, and there's a reset button too. Overall, I'm very pleased with this. It's certainly got some heft and a nice design feature in, in the uh, recessed connections which helps to give an overall impression of uh, good quality. It comes with all but one of the leads that you need so I'll get that lead on order. Of course what it sounds like is the acid test once we've got it installed in the car. The only disappointment really is the uh, packaging. With only having protection at the ends the centre of the box is subject to uh, potential damage and also the use of so much non-recyclable packaging. Uh, that, that's, that's also very disappointing. And also a poor grade to the uh, online supplier I used for uh, merely wrapping it in a plastic bag. If you found this video useful, got some value from it, please give it a like down by the title and I shall see you next time.